Okay, we'll get started. We'd like to welcome the 2023 Charles Schwab Challenge champion, Emiliano Grillo, to the interview room. He wins for the second time on the PGA Tour. Emiliano, it's been almost eight years. Welcome back into that chair if we can get some comments on being back in the winner's circle. Well, it feels great. Um, the wait was definitely worth it. It was long, but it was, wait, uh, it was worth it. So um, happy to be a champion in Colonial. I get to put my name right next to Roberto de Vicenzo, which is probably 40, 40 50 years ago. So. Um, uh, I'm excited. Uh, I, I I said it a few times that I wasn't going to retire without winning here. And uh, I'm lucky that I got it done in the last year before the renovations. So um, I'm excited. I'm, I'm, I'm happy. That's the way I can put it. Just talk a little bit about how your goals change now for the rest of the season going forward. Uh, they, they don't change. I'm going to try to go next week and hit the first fairway and the first green and make that putt. That's... that's uh, that's my plan for next week. Uh, after that, I'll probably take a, a little break before I guess I'm getting to US Open now. So, um, uh, you know, uh, goals don't change. I'm going to try to get third win now. And before questions, just take us through that last playoff hole, number 16, the tee shot, and then the putt. Yeah, I mean, obviously, we're playing from the same distance, same hole location. I was able to hit a perfect shot in there. You know, I was 18, 20 feet past the hole. And um, this one went a little bit right of where I wanted. Um, grabbed the entire slope and finished left of the hole, which it's, uh, it's pretty impressive considering how, um, how far right it bounced. Um, obviously, Adam, the shot that he got to, to, to pull from behind the green was incredible. I thought I, you know, I was almost looking to, obviously, I was thinking that I needed to make that putt because I was getting ready for you know, it, it's a match play situation. You're you're expecting your your opponent to pull the shots, and he he did. He hit inside inside four feet, four or five feet, and and um, I just hit a great putt and went dead center. So uh, the emotions were were very high. All right, we'll open it up to questions. We'll start with Dean. Yeah, on the 18th hole, your ball had quite the journey in the water that was pretty bizarre. Can you kind of walk us through what you saw and just your whole reaction to the sequence? Yeah, I've I've, I've done it before. I hit the exact same shot to be right on the tree, and 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 I knew when, when I saw the one of the marshals walk right on the tree, I, I knew it was going to be a, a long wait until that ball stopped. So um, it stopped for like five, ten seconds at one moment. I was like, you know, I I actually thought I got lucky. So I had a big window, and then five seconds later, the ball kept moving. So um, I I tried my hardest to make a five. I wasn't able. Um, I knew that. I knew if I finished ahead of Scotty Scheffler, I was going to have a chance still. So um, that was the, you know, after after my whatever third shot, I was uh, uh, that was my my only goal to to have a chance for that five. Okay. Next question. Let's go over here to the left, Phil. It was actually 66 years since Roberto won. So <laughs> I give you that More. time frame. But as a second Argentinian champion here. What did the name and the man Roberto Di Vicenzo mean to you growing up in Argentina, and what did he mean to the game of golf in your country? Well, obviously, think about it. 1960, you say 1960, some 1957. 1957. So, I mean, he he was a legend. I mean, it's, <laughs> he was he was winning this tournament, you know, 36 years before I was born. So. Um, uh, obviously, to me, uh, I looked up to him. He's got a an Open Championship and a, a tournament here in Colonial. So uh, I wanted to put my name right next to his badly, and 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 thankfully I got it done. So uh, I guess uh, I guess I should, you know, kind of do the same for the Open. So I'm hopefully hopefully I'm uh, I can I can go back to the Open this year or next year and and, and you know have a chance and. Just, just having my name right next to his is very special. All right, over here, Stephen, on the third row. Like, like you said, when the ball stopped there in that water for a couple of seconds, were you, at that point, were you going to try to hit from that, or, or what were you going to try to do? Well, I mean, I, I was hoping for the ball to stop so I can get in the fairway and have a chance because I knew that whatever I was dropping was going to be in the car path or on the side of the hill, and the, and the situation wasn't going to be ideal. I mean, I was, I was, I, you know, after. 
after hitting my shot in the water, I'm like, okay, what's what's the easiest way to make a five from here? And the easiest would have been the ball to stop at some point, get in the fairway, hit the green, and two putt. I mean, that was that was that would have been an ideal situation. Just give myself a putt uh, from the green for for four. And obviously, that ball, when it stopped, it stopped like right in front of a branch and a rock, and it was almost a an unplayable shot. So uh, I just had to get my you know my stuff together and 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 try to make it five from there. Once that hole was done and and you were waiting because obviously Adam had gotten had had matched you a couple holes back. What was your thought process as you waited for the playoff and how did you kind of get your mind settled back in to get ready for that? Well, it wasn't up to me. That was the so I was uh, you know I we had a baby 14 months ago. And my perspective changed. You know it wasn't. It wasn't gonna change me. It wasn't gonna. It wasn't gonna change my my excitement to call my family and and, and see my little boy. And you know, it's, it wasn't up to me. It was up to Adam. Uh, he hit a great putt. I think he if he would have hit it a little bit firmer, he would have gone in. The story would have been different. He would have been sitting here, you know, probably an hour earlier. And um, but that's golf. I mean, he hit great shots there on 18, then on the first playoff hole, and and then I guess a bit of a wrong club, and then. On 16, a uh, great shot from the back, and you know, it forced me to make the putt. So, um, you know, one bad swing all day. Uh, I didn't have my driver today. It's usually the strongest part of my game, and and I didn't have it today. I hit perfect three woods all week, and I look at James, say, hey, we should, you know, we should hit a three wood on on 18. I mean, it's downwind. I'm, I'm still gonna hit a wedge on the second shot, and we kind of we kind of did that. Perfect putt, but it didn't go in, and and the rest is history, I guess. Chris? Emiliano, over here to your right. How did you get the idea to bring the kids over on the first tee when you were practicing for the playoff? I mean, I kind of, I guess it was a little bit of a trick, get my head out of the, out of the situation. Um, you know, there's two kids there right next to the first tee, and I'm like, hey, you guys want to hit balls? I mean, uh, I, I wish, you know, they're 70 years old or, however all they are. I mean, Jose Cosres did it with me when I was seven, eight years old, and that was the, the great experience of my life, just watching him and, and hitting his clubs. And, and you know, I, I, I kind of got to do it with them, and hopefully they'll, they'll remember that. Um, and it's also something that it, it helped to get my mind off the situation. I mean, I just made a double. I just basically gave the tournament away, and... And, and it wasn't up to me. It wasn't in my hand. So it was, uh, it was a moment that I needed to get my head up, up out of that. Okay. Mark in the middle. Hey, Emiliano, congratulations on the victory. Um, you played in the President's Cup as a captain's pick in 2017. Next year it's in Canada. How meaningful would it be uh, for you to perhaps qualify on points next year? I think we're, <laughs> what, over a year away from it. So it's a long way. Uh, obviously, it's one of my favorite tournaments. Uh, I was able to do it there in Liberty National. Um, obviously, we didn't play great, but you know the the mentality of the team changed quite a bit, and uh, very close the last two years, the last two editions, I would say. Um, so yeah, I mean, uh, I love Mike. Mike is a great person. Uh, we share a lot of people in common, and. Um, you know, I'm 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 excited. I'm excited where everything is at. I, I'm excited that I get to go to some places that I've been wanting to go for the last seven years. So, um, I guess tournament of champions it is. I'm looking forward to that. Uh, going back to the Masters, I'm I'm there's there's a lot of things before Presidents Cup that I'm looking forward to. But I mean, if I keep playing this way, if I keep hitting fairways, greens, and but in the same way, I I. You know, I should be, I should be able to, you know, s sleep easy at night, knowing that I can, I can get it done and be on the team. Okay. Any other questions?